Wake up, fellas. It's time to get your freaking minds right. It's Tuesday morning. It's Wake Up Mincy, presented by the fine folks of Dude Wipes. You'll never need dry, scratchy toilet paper again. I think Mr. Moody and I both have already used Dude Wipes this morning. Get your day going. If there ever was a show that had a mess to clean up, it's this one. Get Dude Wipes nationwide, Amazon, Walmart, retail stores, and online. It being Tuesday, we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. We're, it's not a Tuesday, it's Tuesday. We're joined by the one, the only, the living legend, the source, Stu Finer, joins us from New York. We're fired up. Let's get this shit going on Tuesday. Stu, how are you doing? Ben, feeling amazing. Tyler, feeling amazing. First of all, I both love you. God bless you. May God be with you and all your dreams come true. And getting the day started, as always, Big Cat Stella Blue Coffee. Check it out, StellaBlueCoffee.com. Not just this big cat, a hell of an American, but he's got amazing coffee. And they've got iced coffee now, too, with the weather changing. Totally a game changer. Just a great, great cup of coffee. Shout out, Big Cat. Shout out, Stella. Shout out again. I love coffee. Tyler Moody joining us as well from Louisiana. Mr. Moody, how are you this morning? Hey, good morning, boys. How are we doing? Always good to be in here with Stu. You know, it's just uh, it's a good way for me to start my week is waking up and seeing Stu's face on my computer screen. I love it. You, yes. start your week, you start your week on Tuesday, Moody? I start my week on Mondays when the fantasy uh, fantasy week starts. So that's kind of how okay. my week goes, yeah. Okay, well, ton of stuff to get into today. Got a bunch of topics. We got Stu. Uh, man, I honestly don't even know where to start. I guess we'll start real quick with the NBA play tourney He starts tonight. Oh, big game for you, baby. We yeah, are, I know. Listen, are your Pelicans going to eliminate the Slaker team? Are they going to just rain booze down? On the Lakers, what do you think here? This is a big game for you personally. Oh, this is such a huge game. There's so much to get to. So last week, this damn Pelicans thing is so weird to figure out. They're one and six in their last seven at home, but they're like the best NBA road record. It's so weird. There's like because they used to be good at home and bad on the road, which is like a common thing. But last week, they went four and zero on the road. They won at Phoenix. They won. They beat the Kings and Warriors back to back on the road. And then they come home Sunday. All they got to do is beat the Lakers to get the sixth seed or have the Suns lose to the T-Wolves. And the Lakers just come out and kick the shit out of them in New Orleans. I mean, this game was over the second it started. LeBron had like seven assists in the first six minutes. They killed them when Brandon Ingram comes back. Then the Suns kill the Wolves. Stu, they're going to have to rename this damn play in the Pelicans tournament. This is the third year in a row they've been in it. And... It's weird tonight because it's like after the Lakers just stomped the Pelicans two days ago and you think of LeBron and AD and a winner take all, but the Pelicans are still favored by one on DraftKings, which kind of gives me some hope because how can any public better take the Pelicans today? Well, here's what I could say about the game. Obviously, it, we're going to say here, paywall stew, because this is my 25000 all-in max best bet in the NBA play-ins tonight, and it starts the NBA 2024 playoffs. I love this game responsibly. Everyone out there should pay me and make the biggest bet of their life. Can't tell you who I have, but I'll tell you right now, Lakers, Pelicans is my 25 diver. Hell yeah. I love, love the enthusiasm. Uh, New Orleans, 630 start tonight. And then the other playing game is Golden State at Sacramento. Golden State, a two and a half point favorite. Obviously, the nightmare panic scenario for like New Orleans and Pelicans fans is playing LeBron in a winner take all and then playing Steph in a winner take all and not making the playoffs. But they went 49 and 33. Zion's been healthy. So no reason to panic. Just really want to kick the crap out of the Lakers. I hate Anthony Davis. He was a bitch to New Orleans. And excited for that tonight. A lot of stuff happened over the weekend. Uh, Scotty Scheffler won the Masters easily by four strokes. Stu, how about this gambling heater by our boss or by my boss, Dave Portnoy? I mean, he no, hits. Dave, a... Listen, one of the most unprecedented big game runs you've ever seen in your life. And what you really have to respect about Dave Portnoy is after he won the 2.1 million net on Connecticut. When he was talking to Big Cat, he literally dropped, dick dropped, because he's so real. He said, I think that just got me even for the tournament. <laughs> so there's not many people that could win 2 million, net 2.1 million, and be gut level out of saying all that did was get him even for the tournament. That's why you got to really respect Dave Portnoy. That's why he's the greatest, really, promoter ever, because he's gut level honest. He tells it like it is, good or bad. I've never seen a big game heater like this ever. Never, never, never. In front of the world, in front of your eyes, showing the tickets, never. 
it's the greatest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. So to recap, the Dave gambling heater of 2024, he bet a million dollars on Michigan against Alabama in the Rose Bowl. He bet 500 K on Washington against Texas in the Sugar Bowl. He hits both. I believe he, I, I think he took that. He took Michigan in the title game, I believe, but not as big. Then he put th- 600K on UConn to win the national title, wins 2.1 million. And then he bet 300K on Scotty Scheffler at like four and a half to one and won 1.25 million. Wow. I Damn. Think, Talk I about believe- throwing your nuts on the table. At, listen, he bet all favorites. He bet the favorites with Michigan. Michigan was the favorite in the game. He bet the Chiefs as the favorite. He yeah, he had that too. He had 500K on the Chiefs in the Super Bowl too. And Scotty Scheffler is the favorite, and the favorites have covered for him. And, uh, you know, he's a monster favorite better. He can pull dogs out of his ass like he did FDU last year in the tournament. Um, but it's unprecedented. It's unbelievable. You know, the guy's on fire, raises a million and a half dollars for the uh, policeman that was killed on uh, duty. Good to job to the do family, it. you know, has written millions of dollars for the, you know, there's never going to be any rescue dogs no more because Dave gave enough money that they're going to be able to live ho- high on the hog. I think he should buy another $20 million Miami mansion and have dogs in it. It should just be dogs. That's it. It should be 101 Dave Dalmatians, 101 Dave Rescues, do a new movie. Forget about the movie about his life with the pizza, making a billion dollars, selling his company four times. It should be Davey Dog. Davey Dog. Forget about DDGG Global. Davey Dog. I think he's recognized by Miss Peaches more than anything right now. I can't go anywhere without people saying, did you see Miss Peaches? Did you see Miss Peaches? Did you see? It's like the biggest thing ever. It's unbelievable. It's bigger than Frank the Tank. And I didn't think that was possible. Yeah, I know. Miss Peaches hit, she's already at over a million Instagram followers. And it was awesome to have her in the office last week when Dave was here for the mini golf open that Ryan Whitney won. Got to meet Miss Peaches. Such a sweet demeanor considering the life she's had. But I mean, every woman in my life hits me up uh, just about Miss Peaches too nonstop. It's like it's reached a whole different demographic. And I mean, she's just a rock star celebrity. And Dave Portnoy just pretty much uh, owning 2024. Some other stuff to get to in the open. So I wanted to mention this. I mentioned this to Moody, and I want to see if Stu has seen anything like this. So I've been following the Kentucky basketball saga this last week. So John Calipari leaves for Arkansas. The Tyson Foods chicken dude gave him like $5 million for NIL. You know, probably had run its course. He had a great career at Kentucky, but last five years didn't make the Sweet 16 after he won the title and made three Final Fours. I get all that. What I want to talk about is Kentucky search. They're talking about Billy Donovan coming from Chicago. They try to make a run at Billy Hurley. You know, people are mentioning all these big names. They hire Mark Pope from BYU, which, so all these Kentucky fans, including Riggs, the Barstool, comes out of the video. You got to fire Mitch Barnard, fire the AD. This is an unacceptable hire. Mark Pope uh, made the tournament twice in five years at BYU, did play on the Kentucky 96 national championship team. So there's all this outrage or whatever, and I'm like, okay, I get it. You're Kentucky. You think you're a brand. You need to get a bigger hire. It goes from that outrage, 24 hours later, Stu, Mark Pope rolls into Lexington to Rupp Arena, and you'd have thought they hired John freaking Wooden. This whole thing sold out. He comes up to 96 national champions with his ring. I've never seen a fan base 180 from fire the AD to celebrating a hire like that in my entire life. It's the weirdest thing ever, and I just can't really figure it out. I guess it's just a Kentucky thing. Well, but Kentucky- like literally, they all wanted to fire the AD. And then 24 hours later, you thought they hired John Wooden. I'm very confused. Well, I mean, Kentucky is a brand of college basketball, top five brand ever. We know this. And for my money, John Calipari has always been a salesman. Like almost like a shyster, like a hustler. I never thought he was a great coach. I mean, any when he won in 2012, what do you have? Five NBA players on the team. Day, 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 day. I mean, come on. I mean, that wasn't even fair. And be honest with you, he's been in a lot of other positions. I think who knocked him off? Gonzaga or somebody oh. knocked him off when he was undefeated. Who was yeah, that was Wisconsin. Oh, Wisconsin. It was in the final four that year. Yeah. Right. Okay. So they, so in other words, when he's had the best teams, he hasn't overperformed as far as his coaching ability, the best recruiter ever looks great, speaks great, speaks eloquent. But again, Kentucky probably settled in and said, listen, this is our coach. We have to back him. It's done already. There's no crying over spilt milk. And I think Pope's going to do a great job. He did a great job at BYU. I mean, no one's going to BYU to play basketball. Think about it. And now, be honest with you, 
every college, as long as their recruiters and their boosters have a ton of money, the playing field's pretty much equal because it's one and done for the entire starting five now everywhere. Um, I think he'll do a great job. I'm not surprised that uh, Kentucky did a 360 or a 180, however you want to look at it, because they're backing their own. There's, there's no way to go but to back him, and I think he'll do a great job. I, I do. I actually like the hire too. He runs a good offense. They do like the analytics, like layups or threes. I mean, I think it'll be fine. I just think Kentucky. It's just funny seeing where their fan base uh, is on everything. Uh, some other stuff, as always, we got fun stuff going on in the Barstool office. Join Barstool Tate, Ohio's Tate and me on Sunday, two p.m. Stu, I wish you could be part of it. We're hosting a wing eating competition at Barstool River North in Chicago. They asked me, Ben, do you want to participate in the wing eating competition or you want to host it? And I realized i need to host it <laughs> and probably not eat a ton of wings so but that'll be fun come join us sunday at 2 p.m we've also got the barstool film fest we're doing this week we'll be working on that wednesday and thursday the teams came out yesterday uh my team i'm on pretty unreal it's so we got the Fist- stoolie running the camera we got hank nick tarani nick tarani writing and then brandon walker and i on it and we got to produce a short film in two days too so i feel like me and walker this could be something I love that. I, you know, if I'm going to throw in what um, the uh, topic should be is uh, sex, sex sells. It always sells. And when I think of you and Brandon, I only think sex. So why not? There you go. So Stu, maybe uh, Nick Nick and Stu will be maybe collaborating on our short film, but uh, excited about that for sure. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, Some other quick stuff to touch on. I doubt either one of y'all saw it, but Ole Miss did their spring game a lot different on Saturday. They just went seven on seven. They had Joey Chestnut eating hot dogs. They had a slam dunk competition. They had tug of war. They just went a totally different route. And I'm just curious, like the spring football thing, like nobody wants to get hurt. You know, that's the biggest thing. But, you know, do you think that's a good or bad thing? Would you rather just do a regular spring game for competition? Or I think Lane Kiffin just knows we have a ton. Ole Miss has a ton of talent, spent all this money in the portal. He's like, I'm not risking anybody getting hurt. And he said, ultimately, that's more important. But uh, I respect it. Just trying to make the spring game fun because spring football is pretty damn boring. Y'all know, you know what I mean? Well, I would say right now, Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss are, are loaded. I mean, they're legit loaded. I can't remember the last time they were this loaded. So I would, I would just, whatever Lane says, let's do. He's done a phenomenal job there. I mean, his record is impeccable there. They're building every year. And this year they're coming in with a chance to shock the world. I mean, this year, they could come in. They're loaded. They could win the national championship. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not breaking any records. No, no, 14, 14 to 1 right now on draft games. Very live. That, I mean, they legit could win the national championship. Yeah, super stoked uh, about, about that fall. I've already looked ahead at the schedule. October 12th at Baton Rouge. October 26th, Oklahoma comes to Oxford for the first time, I believe. Georgia, November 9th. Can't freaking wait till fall, but we got a long time. Uh, between now and then some other funny stuff to get to okay Stu, we had billy football on obviously we all saw the video of billy showing up uh in long island to get your signature did you see his speech yesterday on instagram calling out shenanigans in the nassau county republican party yep i mean look welcome to the most corrupt business in the entire world uh which is politics and let me tell you something billy is not just a swinging dick He's not just a gorgeous jock. He's not just a guzzling uh, alcohol drinker. He's very, very impressive. Very, very smart. Very, very articulate. I didn't know he double majored in political science. So really, he has been uh, really engaging to be a politician his entire life. And that was his college career before he was an intern at Barstool. So I really think it's showing right now. And it's sad how he's been cock blocked. It's sad how he now he knows how the game is played. You know, it's the dirtiest, most disgusting, ugly business in the world politics. It's the reason I never got involved with it. And I think he's hit really a rough road right now but he spoke about it honestly he spoke he articulated his position i was very impressed with him all the way around i love him if i had a vagina you know cc would have a problem because it'd be i'm going after his penis. <laughs> but so i don't we're, but we're, i don't we're referring to billy so some guy in his dish so there's like four or five republicans up for this primary in late june that all got the signatures needed and some guy one of them saying i think it's something with petrie 
and the guy that's the head of the Nassau County are trying to do a thing where they block them from the primary and LePetri just gets on as the Republican unopposed. And Billy came out just scathing, saying how that's un-American, even if it's legal, blocking people and let the people speak. And I don't know, he had the slick back hair, he had the suit on. He was looking pretty funny, uh, pretty, pretty, not funny, pretty good. I thought he handled it well. Uh, it's just I'm fascinated by this Billy run for Congress. I mean, I can't wait to see it all. Stu, he, we had him on last week. He was talking about having a rally with Dante the Don, like DJing an EDM for a political rally, taking it to the young voters. I mean, I can't wait to see where this goes. I just hope they let him on the damn ballot. Yeah, 100%. I mean, look, yesterday he was hot when he was talking. He had that rough and rowdy champion uh, Jose Canseco fight uh, face on when he knocked out Ho Jose Canseco in rough and rowdy. There was no bullshit about Billy. He was from the gut, from the heart, speaking about every uh, human on this planet in District 3, really representing the Republicans with a lot of fever. And I look, he would be a better candidate against Tom Swazi. I mean, LaPetrie's going to get annihilated. He has zero shot. Billy has much more of a shot against Swazi than LaPetrie. That's the bottom line. Yeah, I think that's probably why he's making a move to try to block him. Because I, I would think if you're like a kid, and I don't know anything about this stuff really, but from my uneducated view, if you're like an older establishment person, you'd be terrified of Billy. Because he's got the barstool following. He's got hundreds of thousands of followers. He's 25. He's obviously going to impact that youth voting. And I think he sees him coming and is like a little, you know, more than like, this is more not a joke. Like it's Molly, he's concerned. Well, look, he's a wild card. And you, he has no history. So those people are dangerous. You know, LePetri can't just line him up like the other people that are Republican nominees that they've been in the political arena. Billy's brand new. Literally, he's got three weeks to a month into this political arena. There's nothing on him. He's dangerous. And he could pose a much bigger threat to Tom Swazi. And Swazi right now is a monster favorite. He's like a hundred to one favorite to win it, you know, no matter who runs. Okay. But at least I think Billy will have some si uh, sizzle. You know, LePetri's going to get crushed, humiliated, destroyed. That's uh, you follow Billy on Twitter at Billy Hot Takes, Bill Cotter for Congress.com. Just fascinating stuff. Like the Barstool world, you never know where it's going to go. And that's always what's so fun to me is like every day is a new exciting adventure. But this Billy football for Congress run, I mean, this one is like nuked my brain. I mean, this was like one I couldn't possibly see coming. Well, we're going to go from Billy's Congress run to. Let me just say, can, I, can I just say one Yeah, more go ahead. Now we got plenty of time. Billy being such a youngster and growing up with Big Cat and PFT as really both father figures. I've met Billy's father. What a class act. But it, it, it takes, you know, it takes a tribe to raise a child. Isn't that the story? It takes like the whole county, whatever. So I think um, he has tremendous experience with Big Cat and PFT shredding him holding him to task on the things that he's been wrong on and it's made billy grow up so i think big cat and pft really have a lot of um influence on billy and i think you could see it that's yeah. just my final thought and i feel like macro dosing i know they talk about politics all kinds of stuff arian foster actually gave 50 dollars to billy's campaign i saw but i feel like this kind of came up on macro dosing as a joke and billy's like no i'm gonna do it with like pft i don't know the whole thing's nuts can't it's wait. no joke. It, it it started off as a joke, but it's no joke now. No, he's all in. So, all fun. In. so we're going to go from talking about Billy for Congress to something that just one of the funniest videos I've ever seen. Our friend Donnie does world. The wonton Don is over in Hong Kong. And I get a text from Donnie on Saturday. Like, what's your height and your weight and your age? I'm like, why are you asking that? Like you're in Chinese. Like I'm going to the Chinese shanghai wife market to find you and nikki smokes wives it's like what he's like oh yeah i'm on it so and then he released a video saturday on twitter you can check it out i retweeted it. it's on donnie's twitter of him at the shanghai wife market Stu, you gotta have some thoughts here um first of all donnie's got you back anybody that goes to hong kong and he's trying to get pussy for you guys i mean that's unbelievable i mean you're not married um nikki's not married donnie is and and what Donnie is so Donnie knows what to look for in a bride, especially a male in bride. I love it. I mean, the thing I had that I was hysterical about is when he was pitching to the group, it was mostly men. So 
Are you coming out of the closet or Nikki today? Is this something that we should know? Uh, that's that's news to me. If so, I don't I don't see that happening. Oh, okay, fair enough. So because there were a lot of men intrigued, maybe maybe they sexually felt something for you and Nikki, the men of Hong Kong. But I didn't really see the women going. You know, really, they weren't really interested, but the men were. Well, I can't really imagine me with a ninety day Chinese mail order bride. That uh, that's. I don't know. That would that, the communication would be quite quite an issue. I think I would check the bank account. Let's say he's coming from Hong Kong with like thirty milli. You know, I mean, thirty milli is a lot of money. Yeah, they ain't got much to take from me though, so I don't really know. No, no, they're gonna give it. Yeah, but say so I don't know what they're gonna get uh, necessarily get off me uh, on that front. Well, Stu, one of the other things I always love getting into with you. So Stu and I have uh, honestly one of my favorite relationships I have on earth. But we get on each other's ass all the time about the hell stuff because we struggle with the exact same stuff. We love to binge and overeat. And, you know, we, we it's like we fight very similar stuff. And, you know, lately, I, I've been following your way and stuff. You said you uh, had a big party you went to last night? Oh, uh, yeah. It was in, listen, first of all, I've gained 10 pounds in the last four weeks. My exercise has gone to nearly nothing, and I don't know why. Well, I do know why, as you know. We're, we're addicts. And uh, when I participate, I'm a gutter drunk, whether it's sugar or carbs or marijuana. And last night, I went to this epic opening. It was a grand opening of some individual that has created $500 blunts, 12 Wait. 12 grams in a blunt, 10 grams of high quality weed, two grams of resin, gold leaf, really from gold, a bar of fucking gold. They shave it. They put gold leaf in it and it takes two to three hours to smoke like a like an epic cigar. I was fucked up. I was so fucked up. And then they they said, take a dab hit. Oh, man. I haven't, I haven't taken a dab hit in a long time. So the way they do the dab hit right now is they fry the, you know, the um, THC and then they put it in a cylinder and the cylinder goes into like a giant, like a, um, a beer mug and you guzzle the beer mug and all the smokes in the beer mug goes in my lungs. Listen, I was so fucked up that I asked my son, Ryan, to drive me home, but this is weird. Responsible. I, I, I said to Ryan like three times, I said, did you drive? Because twice I went out into the parking lot to look for my car and I couldn't find my car twice. I asked my, my son the second time. I didn't believe him because I was so stoned. I think he just wanted to hang out there and he didn't want to leave. I was so stoned, I had to get out of there. That's never happened to me in my entire life. He finally drove me home. And of course I ate like 4,000 calories when I came home, wasn't good. At four bagels with cream cheese and a giant bag of Ruffles potato chips. I ate these, um, these chocolates, dark chocolate covered in banana frozen. They're called banana delights. Let me tell you something right now. They're arguably one of the greatest things I've ever had in my life. But again, you and me on a daily basis commiserate. It's very hard to be sober. It's very hard to stay away from sugar, carbs, marijuana, whatever our addictions are, our specific addictions. And, uh, you know, we struggle. We're, we're like brothers from another mother. And uh, right now, uh, I'm a gutter drunk. And I've already had two bagels this morning with my eggs and my mozzarella. So not starting today, Ben. Maybe tomorrow. Well, I feel you. Uh, I, I haven't checked the scale in a few weeks because I'm terrified of it, which is the worst thing you could ever do because every problem, this is a like life lesson thing. Every time you have a problem in life, you got to face it head on because when you like don't want to face it, it's like a molehill becomes a mountain, you know? The problems only get bigger, but I definitely think I've gained like 15 the last two months during March Madness. I'm actually having to I'm having to like ban myself from eating at the office because we just have all this good free food here and pizza and all that. And during those March Madness streams, I mean, I just like, there's no self-control. Like I have to go back for seconds, you know, it's, it's absurd. I mean, I'd say Stu and I fight the same stuff. And so I'm like back on it this week and doing cardio again and eating healthy and it's boring, but you know what? We got to do it because we got to keep, keep this alive. Uh, got a lot to live for. And so I'm going to go on it and I've already decided it's in December, Stu. So it's far ahead, but I want to do the St. Jude half marathon again this year that I did nice. 21 minutes. And I think like, what I realized is what's interesting is like the mindset stuff. I always struggle and you've done this too, cause you've done marathons. Like I'll get so into it on the buildup and then I'll do it. But then I struggle on the maintenance right after. Or like, it's like when you build like a big goal and like you and I both have that like obsessive addictive personality, like we just go all in on something. We're going to freaking do it. But it's like when that's over and you're like, what's the next thing? 
It's like a danger zone, if that makes sense. No, of course. I mean, it's the thing that Steve Mahalik, Mr. America, Mr. Universe, taught me. He said, because I, I, that was exactly my pattern. I would accomplish, I'd run an a, amazing uh, half marathon, amazing, ama uh, an amazing marathon. But I would celebrate a win with a loss, which he would say, me going to the sugars, me going to the carbs, me going to the marijuana, me going to the cocaine, would be celebrating a win into a loss. And I never have been able to, I'm 63 years old, break that habit. Because when I want to celebrate, it's not celebrating sober. Have I celebrated sober? Yes. Have I put during my like eight straight years together when I got married, after I had my third kid, seven, uh, I think it was almost seven point nine years of perfect sobriety. Yes. Wow. But eventually I cracked and I celebrated all the wins I had in my life, multi-million dollar business, my wife still being with me, my third kid. Uh, into the sugar, the carbs, and the marijuana. So I so validate that struggle. It's such a hard struggle because, you know, it's great, all the sugars, the carbs, everything, the marijuana, even the liquor, you know, the sex. But a lot of it is you celebrate the win into a loss, and then you got problems. Yeah, no, this is all just preaching to the choir. And the problem is when you're watching the sugar and you're on and off, that it's like you drop a bunch of weight when you're off it, but when you fall – you just gain 10, 15, like overnight. I mean, it's just instant. Unbelievable. No, I, I totally feel you. Well, so I know you're getting ready for spring. Uh, is mulch, mulch day coming up? Yes. Next Monday is mulches here, April 22nd. And we're going to have a big pop in circumstance. I'm selling the mulches here, total merchandise, hats, shirts, everything on the Barstool store. So get your mulches here merch. Then May 22nd, is the first dive. I'm opening my pool May 17th. First dive into the pool is May 22nd. I'm having something really great this year. You buy a shout out and we put you into a contest where I'm going to pick somebody out of the hat and them and four friends are going to come to my house, party with me, smoke with me, drink with me, eat with me and dive into the pool together. I've never done that before. So that's getting a lot of buzz. And then um, May uh, 10th on a, a Saturday, I think it is. My son's throwing this insane party in front of his 18,000 square foot building. My son, Ryan, he's he's murdering Ben. This guy's going to be a billionaire from awesome. owning real estate to wiring multi million dollar houses, audio visual, putting cameras, putting lights, putting movie theaters in people's houses. Now he has credit card processing for all these restaurants. He does security and firewalls for the restaurants, he wow. does build outs for the restaurants. This kid's killing. Anyway, he's having a monster party in his parking lot. He went partners with this guy um, that does barbecue. Amazing barbecue. If okay. you could fly in, you could stay at my house and eat because this barbecue is right up your alley. So a lot of great things are happening and we're ready to roll and life is great. Now, can I say one more thing about living in New York? Yes. Islanders made the playoffs. Rangers, best team in hockey. They're in the playoffs. New York Knicks. Stunning the world, number two seed. Buzz is there. We feel even without Julius Randle, we could win the NBA championship. The Mets, after starting 0-5, the season looked over. KSC caught the season. Frank was having a heart attack. They've now on an 8-3 run, and they're 500 baseball. And the Yankees are the best team in baseball. So to live in New York right now, it is amazing. New York, New York. Wow. Yeah. I love that you brought up the hockey. So uh we've got the FDNY, the the uh the that the game with the FDNY against the cops is Saturday at the Islanders Arena. Uh Jake Marsh broadcasted it. The spit and chicklet guys are there. Love that Barstool is involved with that event. Uh that's a sold, I believe it's sold out at the Islanders Arena on Long Island. So check that out this Saturday. Uh, amazing Barstool event. And you know, Dave and Barstool continue to support the first responders always. Uh, we always do, and I love that. I love that about our company. I saw Dave actually had a post that a couple of uh, officers were killed upstate, and he was supporting them yesterday. So check that out. Give if you can and help help them out. Uh, what's hockey time like in the playoffs in New York? Well, I guess I know because I was there, but the Islanders-Rangers thing, I mean, that is, uh, you know, I, I mean, is that the biggest of the New York rivalries? Is that the biggest one probably? Oh, by far. I mean, they hate each other and they respect each other, but they want to kill each other when they're on the ice. And we're going to be having, as always, 
the live streams at Borelli's. So me, Frankie, and his father will do the live stream at Borelli's for the road games. And then the home games, we actually go there and they have a film crew and film us. So we do millions of views. We get the Islanders hyped. It's absolutely exciting. UBS is humming. Now, can I say something about UBS? They have something called the Heineken Bridge. So if you can imagine this, they have like a 70 yard long room where they have a breathtaking bar to the left and it's a Heineken bar and, it, and hundreds of people are at this bar. Then they have two DJs jamming and then the right side is open. So it's an open area and everyone's smoking marijuana. There are thousands of people smoking marijuana, passing joints around because it's legal. Anywhere in the United States that it's legal to smoke cigarettes now, it's legal to smoke marijuana as long as marijuana is legal in your state, which is, is almost every state. So people are just getting baked during the periods. Music's blasting. People are dancing. I can't wait to be doing the live streams at Borelli's and then the Heineken Bridge smoking marijuana for all my Islander fans. It's epic. You should come. You should come. You should come. Playoff hockey. There's nothing like playoff hockey. And like I said, I'm never... I'm the big, big NHL guy, but the intensity of playoff hockey is unbelievable. And I feel like every year, this time of year, I'll start out watching an NBA playoff game. It'll be a blowout. And then I flip over to the hockey game where I like don't know anything about it. And I'm just riveted because the intensity of playoff hockey is unmatched literally in sports. It's just unbelievable. No, absolutely. It's, it's almost like the World Cup in soccer where one goal could win it all. That's it. One goal can win it all. So one mistake dictates the whole game. So it's that intense and playoff hockey, nothing better. No, the Borelli streams are just, I mean, unbelievable. And uh, can't can't wait to follow that. Do you do hockey picks in the playoffs too? Or are you just sticking yes. back? Okay. Yes, that's the only time I pick hockey is in the NHL playoffs. That's it. Regular season, I just relax, pull in whoever I like, pull in the Islanders every night. No stress, no pressure of people paying me or selling the games. I just enjoy the season. But playoff hockey, I always get down and dirty. I always do really well. And then like three years ago, I went on a record of, I, I gave out all my best bets for free in the playoffs. And I was on like a 23 and three run, including winning 17 straight games of the year for free on Twitter. So uh, I love hockey. So this time of year, you're doing Major League Baseball picks, NBA, and hockey playoffs. That's what, what's going on? Exactly. That's what you can get at StuFinder.com. And then be like Stu.com is all the shout outs, my book, come towels, all the merch. And then on the Barstool store is all my merch coming up. So, uh, yes, very busy, very excited. Can't wait for the playoffs to start all the way around. And I love life and I love you. I love life and I love you too, Stu and Moody. What a crew! What a what a crew we've got. I'm gonna try to make it up there for one of your Sunday parties this summer. I hadn't been to New York since I moved in January of 2022. I, I got to get back at some point and see you the summer. Oh, absolutely! And bring Tyler and we'll party and we'll have a great time and we'll do some walks. We'll do some runs. We'll eat yeah. a little bit, maybe eat a little more than a little bit, and we'll hug it out. Stu, hell I was, yeah! I was gonna ask you, how do you feel about uh, waking and baking? Um. I'm a degenerate. I love waking and baking. Like I would walk the dog in the morning when my son, my youngest son, they always used to smoke blunts in the backyard. And I used to w crawl on my hands and knees looking for that like piece of a blunt that they just <laughs> dropped on the floor. And I bake. Nothing's better than waking and baking because that dictates the entire day. As you know, Mince, like every day you wake up, am I going to die this day? Am I going to be clean? Well, if I wake and bake, then there's no uh, doubt what I'm doing. I'm waking, I'm baking, I'm baking the whole day. I'm eating, I'm partying, and I'm starting tomorrow. <laughs> Spoke spoken like a true, uh, true. Uh, I would I would expect Gunner drug baby. I would I would expect nothing less. But you're still walking all the time. You know, you still do the long walks. I know you said you had no. Is your how's your back feeling? I know you were dealing with some back this. is feeling good. I have um I have a herniated disc with a lower back bulging and spinal stenosis. I go twice a week to therapy, uh, Monday and Wednesday, and it's feeling better. I mean, it's feeling better. Yesterday, I had two cortisone shots on my hands, by the way. My pinkies would not lock in. I couldn't make a fist, closed fist, because my pinkies just locked and they and they hurt. So they've been hurting me for about six weeks. It's all those people 
I, I knocked out in 1974, 1973, you know, murdered them. I was like 115 and 12 as a great boxer. But then I stopped in eighth grade because I didn't grow and I didn't want to get my ass kicked. But my hands have still hurt me since then because I punched so many people in the face. So my pinky's locked. So I got two um, cortisone shots yesterday. So I'm feeling a little better. And then now the exercise will increase once I stop eating. But I'm eating today, by the way. <laughs> so yeah, today's already done. Today's already gone. I yeah, can't yeah, yeah I was blood. I texted Stu Sunday night, just like going nuts on myself. But we're on we're on day two. We're clean this week. Good. So far. one, you're a, you're one a day time. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I got a Vegas celebrity poker tour tournament thing. I'm excited about this Friday. But uh, Johnny Manziel was supposed to play in it. Johnny football, and he pulled out yesterday. So I'm kind of. Oh. I know I was a little heartbroken on that. Yeah. Play, play poker with him. Uh, some other. Bunch of fun stuff coming up. The Barstool office popping. We got our NFL draft show next Thursday. That's always a lot of fun. I know there's a lot of hype on that all over the country. Big quarterback year uh, this year. This Caleb Williams thing, he's already promised he's wearing a suit and his lady's got some crazy dress, but uh, they're excited about him in Chicago. Always like, you know, I don't know. Where are you on watching the NFL draft? Do you enjoy it or not? Love it. No, no. I love it because it's hype. I love the hype. Anything that's hype. I love the hype. And it's really weird when they hug the commissioner. I still think that's, like, uh, yeah. I get like cringy. I always look as, you know, is the guy rubbing his penis against his leg? You know, what's the story there? You know, I mean, what do you think about Roger Goodell? You think he sucks dick? I just think he's like the owner's puppet. No, no, like, no, no. But does he suck dick? Specifically? I, I, I have no, I, I, I don't know. I have nothing against if he sucks dick, by the way. No, I, I, I don't. I, I just don't, don't have any reference to judge that or not. I, I do feel like. He sits there and just. Well, he's a everything. scumbag. We know yeah, that. Oh, no he doubt. Sparsel, no doubt. Uh, hates Dave. Hates Sparkle. He doesn't even. He lies and acts like we no. don't even exist. Fuck him. Yeah, he's a piece of shit. He's no. the reason that he gets his fifty billion dollar deals because Barstool generates so many eyeballs to the NFL, and he doesn't treat us with respect. No, and he, he's like the yes man for the owners. I feel like he like take take like his job is to face the firing squad for them. But yeah, I don't. I don't like him, uh, that's for sure. And then one other thing that was crazy last night, uh, you know, we've seen the women's basketball craze. There were 17,000 people at an NBA, MWNBA draft party for the Indiana Fever, I believe. We got Caitlin Clark with the one pick. Uh, Angel Reese from LSU, Camille Dor Cardoso from South Carolina end up in Chicago. But 17,000 people to watch a WNBA draft party stew. Caitlin Clark, first ballot legend of a person growing the game. Well, I can't see anything like – I mean, we got over 10 million people watching the Elite Eight, Fall Four. There were over 15 watching the title game. It is insane what she's done for women's basketball and how mainstream it's gotten. Well, I think women in general, forget about basketball. I think women rule the world right now. There are three women that rule the world right now. The, over any man, maybe ever. I'm going to name them in order. Obviously, okay. number one is Dua Lipa. She okay. rules the world. I mean, any man that looks at her knees buckle, any women that look at her are just envious. God, why am I not Dua? Then you go Taylor Swift, okay. who, legendary billionaire, and it's Kate McClock. That's it. It's Dua Lipa's world, it's Taylor Swift's, and it's Kate McClock. She's amazing. Like, nobody has done what she's done. She's bigger than Michael Jordan. She's bigger than U.S. Steel, as Eli Wallach said in The Godfather Part Two. Listen, she's the biggest thing we've ever seen in our lives. Bigger than Tom Brady, bigger than Patty Mahomes, bigger than LeBron James. Caitlin Clark's influence is mainstream throughout the world. I, I'm so impressed. I, I can't. But, I, but can I say one thing, too? Wouldn't. Would it? Wouldn't. Really? First two, yes. Caitlin, no. Okay, Stu, I, 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 you're always no, a wood no, man. No, would not. Yeah, no, but you're Taylor, always a wood man. I, mean, I can't Harry, remember you saying Harry no Taylor, to Taylor, Caitlin, a no, a hard no. Hard no. Well, Taylor, hard no. Taylor Swift's new album comes out this week, too. Kelly Keegs on Taylor Watch. Uh, that's a huge thing all week, too. I'm sure all this. My, my sister's a huge Swifty. They're, they're, the Swifty thing is just nuts. I mean, that is uh, – it's like a cult, but it's so big. There's just like you said. I mean, it's – I mean, there's just millions of them. Well, I, I, I think like everyone could relate to, first of all, she's a country star. She's brilliant. Then she went into mainstream music, became brilliant. She writes all her songs. Then 
Men have abused her for like seven straight relationships where they cut her heart out and threw it to the curb. And she wrote about it and she was able to capitalize on her, you know, fa- uh, not really her failure, but her heart being broken. I think a lot of women and a lot of children and a lot of men and the world related to that being abused. And then with the Me Too and then with all the stuff, perfect storm. And Taylor really owns the world. Not as hot as Dua, but more talented than Dua. Yeah. She, I mean, just absolutely kills it. So, next, so basically, next few weeks, mulch, pool, Major League Baseball, NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs, uh, you know, sticking around New York. I know another big season of advisors coming in fall. I miss it. It's not the same. Stu, we miss you in Chicago. Oh, listen. Yeah, I you were coming every listen, Tuesday, Wednesday. I, you hadn't been I, here. Where are you? I, I miss being in I miss being because I have such a lapse. Like, the minute the show's over, Big Cat cuts me out. I don't hear from uh, PFT ever. Um, Hank, we, we're starting to talk a little bit on text, but there's such a big void, especially with me and Big Cat. From February through September, it's crazy. It's as if we don't even know each other. It's as if we don't even exist together. It's wild. So I so miss the sports advisors. So miss, <clears throat> excuse me, doing Barstool Sports Advisors. And I, I have business in Chicago, independent of Barstool. So I might be coming down uh, April 21st or 22nd. I might be coming down to Chicago to do restaurant business there. We're doing, okay. We're, we're doing some, we're, we're taking over like a, a hundred restaurants doing their credit card processing. Oh, wow. Doing, that's great. Yeah. Doing um, all their security with cameras from New York, no less. You will we'll be able to monitor from Chicago. Uh, we're also building, a, uh, building the firewalls. And we also now can build out restaurants, soup to nuts. You know, in addition to putting movie theaters in multi-million dollar houses and wiring them. So I'm venturing into Chicago uh, with business that will be able to make money and revenue streams forever. You make pennies off of a lot of things, Ben, and that's how you really make money. So your eggs are never in one basket. You make pennies off of a lot of different areas, and then it comes back to you. Yeah, the multiple income streams, definitely, definitely the way to go. So when you, you said, well, that may be next week, Dad, if you're coming. Maybe next week, yes. Oh, I'd love to get you in the studio. We miss you so much in Chicago. And, you know, I know we just went off on our health stuff, but the the, the dinners we were having, those Tuesday night supper club things oh. we had in Chicago. Were- yeah, first thing I do, I Megan is coming out to dinner with us because she missed every single one of them. And we're bringing Tate. So the next the next victims on the Stu Finer dinner things are Tate and Megan. Obviously with you and, and Hank and everybody who always comes every single week. Yeah, love love Tate, by the way. I think he's coming I here. I love him. I never met him, but I love him. Yeah, he's got, so we're doing a project where, do you remember the movie Billy Madison, Adam Yeah, Sandler? I know. I've been, I've been, I can't wait yeah. to see it. So I can't wait. I, I believe we're start shooting for like, we're going to start trying to shoot like May 6th week, but I've got to pass every grade. And like Billy Madison going back to school. And then we're going to have a big party when I graduate high school and maybe one when I graduate junior high. But I'm wondering like at what grade will I start having trouble? I saw some stuff last night. I was like looking at some. No, you're dead in high school. No, you're fucking dead. Yeah, I know. Especially like. No, you're dead. You're you're as dead as dead. You don't realize how hard hard high school is being removed from it for 25 years. Wait, you really didn't graduate high school? I did. I graduated. Right. And you graduated college too. Yeah, right? it took me forever. I graduated college when I was 31 with right. the two so, so zero. I think, I think like you're very good with math off the top of your head. And to be yeah. honest with you, you really almost have a photographic memory. Yeah. So you are brilliant. You're very smart. You know, can't judge a book by its cover. Yeah. If someone looked at you, they just think you're a fat slob mess. That is the direct opposite. That is not true. You're very intelligent. I think you will struggle though in high school. Absolutely with the math because it's changed, even though you know your math. And I couldn't do I, calculus or trigonometry or any of that stuff. Your sciences are going to get ki- kill you too. Oh, bio kill. and chem. I took biochem and physics in high school. I did. I did chem regents. I was amazing. Physics regents. I was amazing. Um, I'm really smart, but now I'm a total idiot. I can't remember nothing. Like literally, my mind went at about forty. I was brilliant up to forty. Photographic memory forty. 40 years and a day, something mentally wrong with me. Onset dementia, onset Alzheimer's happened at 40 years and a day. Wow. Well, I'm feeling it okay at 40, but uh, I went back penis to school. Penis still works, though. The penis yeah. still works. Good. And that's, so you're 61, still run, 63, running. 63. 63. 
63 still works. Yes, but yes. I can't see still it. Working. I mean, it's not as hard as it used to be at 40 or 30 or 20, obviously. But, you know, three quarters hard after 15 minutes eating ass and 15 minutes licking clit does the job. 15, 15, 30, still rolling. Well, Stu, uh, before we get, get out, you got anything you want to uh, leave the stories with today? I can't wait to see you in Chicago. I know you're busy. Um, uh, Stu.com. Listen, all stoolies remember this, all right? Gambling is for the rich to have fun and lose money. Meaning, not that you can't make money gambling. Dave Portnoy's living proof of him. He's on a heater. I have been on, I was on fire in the NCAA conference tournaments and the NCAA tournaments. And I've always done well in the NBA playoffs. And I run months of winning streaks in a row. But the bottom line is this, never get yourself in trouble gambling. Take us, if you're a thousand dollar better, I want you to be a hundred dollar better. If you're a hundred dollar better, I want you to be a ten dollar better. If you're a ten thousand dollar better, I want you to be a thousand dollar better. If you're a hundred thousand dollar better, I want you to bet a ten thousand. If you're a million dollar better, I want you to be a hundred thousand dollar better because you don't need to risk all the money. And I have billionaire customers, Ben. I have people that fire a million dollars a game and don't even give a fuck about winning, but that's not 99.9% of the stoolies. So don't ever get in trouble gambling. Gamble every day. Every day I want you to gamble, but gamble for little money so you can do it forever. That's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. And I want to also say, be great. Take no shit from no one. You're never overmatched. Let's go, baby. Love yourself. Hug yourself. No one's better than you. There's no excuses now. Look yourself in the mirror and you're going to say, I'm going to work seven days a week, 24 hours a day on my life, on what I want to do for a living, on my platform, my ideas, I'm throwing them out there and just persevere, failure after failure, never lose your enthusiasm. The way out is the way through. Disagree, set free. I love you. I have your back. I'm real. I'm still fighting. You're fucking not. Run and roll, run and roll, Ben. Tyler, I love you. Ooh, Stu Fighter, let's go face the week. Thanks to Dude Wipes for sponsoring Wake Up Mitzi. We got Robbie Fox on here tomorrow to talk UFC 300 and WrestleMania. Thanks, Stu. Thanks, Tyler. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Let's go do the damn thing. Woo! What's up, fellas? As y'all know, it's been a hell of a messy year. And the only thing messier than my online history are my big old fat sweaty dogs. That's why this season, I only trust Dude Wipes to handle my Mississippi mud pies. Oh, Mincy, you're cooking now. Ooh, wee! When you're hot, you're hot. Uh...